the front time news on MITV. I am Jumoke Michaels. We'll take a look at the stories making the headlines. President Muhammad Buhari felicitates with Muslims. Defense headquarters denies Chadian claim on air strikes. Economic and Financial Crimes Commission arrests or hakim. On the foreign sea, U.S. church shooting suspect arrested. And in sports, again, Liverpool reject Sterling Bead. Thanks again for joining us. And now to the stories. President Muhammad Buhari has called on Nigerians to pray for the return of peace, love, and prosperity throughout the country as Muslims start the 2015 Ramadan fast. In a congratulatory message released on his behalf by the Special Assistant Media Publicity, Gabra Shehu, President Buhari implored Muslims to seek maximum benefits from the Ramadan period by being helpful to all mother of people, learning and following the true message of the religion as taught by the Holy Prophet. The President appealed to the perpetrators of violence and destruction in the name of Islam all over the world to desist from tarnishing the name of the religion. The European Union EU has commended President Muhammad Buhari for identifying international engagement on climate change as priority for Nigeria during his administration. The commendation is contained in a spotlight by ambassadors of EU, France, Denmark, Germany, and Britain to Nigeria, Mrs. Mikhail Erin, Dennis Gara, Tobin Gutterman, Michael Zena, and Andrew Pocock. In the spotlight entitled, Climate Change, Facing the Future Together, the ambassador stated that Nigeria had clear evidence of the need for climate change action. The joint spotlights noted that Nigeria was already been confronted by varying degrees of climate change threats and commanded the resolve of Buhari to frontally tackle the challenges. They noted that encroaching desertification, flooding, coastal erosion and changing weather patterns affect agriculture. The said Nigeria was already developing its own national plan and urged the federal government to set ambitious concrete targets to reduce carbon dioxide emissions. The President of the Senate, Senator Bukola Saraki, has given assurance of investment-friendly atmosphere in legislations with a view to bring the country out of economic doldrums. He stated this while receiving a delegation of the United States of America, led by the Ambassador to Nigeria, James Ant Weasel, who paid him an official visit in Abuja. He expressed hope for a bright Nigeria, saying with the abundant resources embedded in the nation, there's confidence that the yearnings and aspirations of Nigerians will be met. National Assembly correspondent Falasha Abdul Abdusalami reports that further extolling the cordiality between the two countries, Senator Saraki said the visit of the U.S. delegation was prompt and coming at a time the nation prepares to readdress most of the challenges militating against its developmental goals. Noting that the Eighth Senate has the mandate to give to Nigerians the dividends of democracy. The U.S. Ambassador James N. Weasel gave the assurance of adequate cooperation and support in the areas of insecurity, power supply, human empowerment, and investment opportunities. He also asserted hope about the future of Nigeria, noting that the energy, zeal, and prowess of many young Nigerians indicate a greater future for the country.
of ways. We have a lot of development programs focused on the youth. Uh, you've all seen that President Obama a couple of years ago announced the uh, what we call YALI, which is the Young African Leadership Initiative. So we're doing a lot, but uh, I should turn the question around. The real question is, what are Nigerians doing to develop the young people in this country? That's the first question, and then we'll see how we can help. But as I said, whenever I travel, I'm always impressed with young Nigerians. Um, I see, meet, meet young Nigerians who are a lot smarter than I was at that age, so I'm very impressed. Well, of course, as the Senate President said, um, our biggest companies here are U.S. oil companies, so sorting out the petroleum sector is, is, is very important. Um, but, you know, I'm not much of an economist, but it seems to me one of the things that we can look at is exports of processed agricultural goods to U.S. markets. Seems to me that's a natural one. Has said that the claim that the Chadian military have conducted airstrikes against six terrorist camps in Nigeria, as claimed by Chadian military sources, is not correct. A statement signed by Major General Chris Olukolade, Director of Defense Information, said the fact is that the Nigerian Air Force Surveillance Mission identified targets that as Camp 6 around Boso Town, which is not within Nigeria's territory and alerted the partners accordingly. According to him, the Nigerian military will continue to cooperate with partners in the mission to exterminate or contain terrorists strictly in conformity with existing terms of the concept of operation at strategic, operational, or tactical levels. He added that it's however important that issues are accurately reported while, mislead, while avoiding misleading or unnecessary sensationalism from any quarter. The Honorable Commissioner and Director General of National Commission for Refugees, Migrants and in Internally Displaced Persons, Mrs. Hashiat Kengiwa, has reiterated the commitment of the federal government in ensuring the principles of the national protection of the refugees and internally displaced persons. She made this known Thursday at a press briefing in commemoration of the World Refugees Day held in Abuja. She said government would collaborate with all relevant partners to further improve the situation of the refugees and internally displaced persons. Correspondent for Lashade Abdul Salami reports that while expressing solidarity, the commission emphasized the need for Nigerians to join hands in eliminating the suffering of all the ref refugees and displaced persons in the country. Solidarity to the displays of the world on the occasion of the World Refugee Day. Um, today marks the beginning of the event of the commemoration of the World Refugee Day week for this uh, press briefing. Today marks uh, the beginning of um, World Refugee Day uh, commemoration activities which uh, begins with the briefing. Um, ladies and gentlemen, uh, World Refugee Day is observed every year on 20th of June in order to raise the public awareness about refugee situations throughout the world. High Commissioner for Refugees, Mrs. Angel Vikonge and Ghana said her commission was reinforcing its activities in the support of internally displaced persons to the distribution of NFIS, as well as conducting intention surveys on the return of IDPs. If that, it is important to galvanize the attention of the nation, of the government, and of the communities in Nigeria, and specifically you, the press to spread around the world that these people need our love, they need our attention, they need us to restore the hope that they have lost. Because for somebody who has no hope, it is tantamount to death. So we need to keep their, the thread of hope. The state governor, Mr. Kiwumi Ambodi, on Thursday visited some of the major traffic points in the metropolis, stating that his administration will provide solutions to traffic smells in the state. Ambodi also approved the construction of a pedestrian bridge at the Jodu Vega Buster, a critical entry and exit point of Lagos. 
The government who spoke with journalists at Dokwemu in Abado Okeodo local council development area after the inspection said he decided to visit the traffic points himself to get a first-hand experience of what the situation was. And what they promised that the state will soon begin the construction of a pedestrian bridge in Bega Basta, Ojodu. He added that in addition to the footbridge, the state government would work to make the road free at all times, saying whatever happened in Bega would have a fallback effect on the third mainland bridge, which would compound the traffic situation at the Oro Shoki end of the highway that we have in the state so we decided that we we're going to go around ourselves and then see how we can improve on the traffic situation in Lagos and uh, you've seen that we've, we've gone to the third mainland of Shoki we've been to Ketu we have been to Abule but we're in a limo shot now and then we've gone to May 12. I mean that's not the end of the story we're still going to our papa mile two and the other axis but the truth is that we must start to have solutions to our traffic challenge in lagos state and that's what we're doing we go around to all these places we check uh, k2 we looked at the underground we look at the service lane uh, practically we discussed and he has given some directives on what to do we went to uh, we looked at ojota also we were at uh, all other places particularly he has he directed that uh, we should not site allow bus stops very near markets and we have looked at it and personally I, together he has looked and pointed to places where we we could uh, get all these uh, bus stops so the and also that in a manner that the people will not be punished the economic and financial crimes commission efcc on thursday said it had arrested former governor ikedi of hakim of imo state mr wilson Wujarin, the spokesman for the efcc made this known to newsmen in abuja he added that former governor Sule Lamido of Jigawa was also been interrogated over corruption allegation. Or Hakim was picked up by operatives of the commission at 8 a.m. from his Abuja residence. He said the operatives had gone after former the former governor following his failure to honor an invitation by the commission. Wujarin said that Lamido was at the commission for interrogation over contracts awarded to companies connected to his family during his tenure as governor of Jikawa. The two former governors have been interrogated at our investigation department, the spokesman father said. The police in Ogun State have uncovered a dreaded shrine in Ode Remo, Remo North of the government area, where human flesh are allegedly eaten, sold, and used for rituals, just as five suspects have been arrested in connection with the crime. The composing body part suspected to be that of a missing female student of Science Laboratory Technology Department at Gateway Polytechnic, Shah Hadi Moreni Keji Ogulabi, was found dismembered at the shrine. Our correspondent, Morita Ladiemo, reports that the State Commissioner of Police, Val Tom Chuku, says the prime suspect, who is an herbalist, identified as Femi Awishi, is still at large. Tom Chukwu disclosed that five suspects, including a commercial motorcyclist that conveyed the victim to the scene, have been arrested and will be arraigned in court upon the completion of police investigation. The suspects who were detained at the divisional police headquarters, Isara Remo, include Adeyemi Ademolu, 29, Latif Ali, 23, Dari Akiemi, 22, Wasiu Shutola, 23, and Taiwo Omolasho, 22 where a 21 year old girl of Gateway Polytechnic Shokade yes. was declared missing a few weeks ago but through discreet investigation and information we were able to trace the missing girl to this particular shrine you have just witnessed where the native doctor and those who shall show you later at the police station they conspired abducted the girl and came here and killed her dismembered her for ritual purposes 
by discreet investigation we're able to discover this shrine we don't know how long this shrine has been in existence but we assure you that this particular uh, nefarious activities will be put to an end with this instant case we put it to an end and we are sending a message to the people of this area to always give police information if not for the information of that Okada man, we will not be able to get to this bush. That person is just my mm, area brother. So we are just playing at that place with that person's house. So they just come and arrest me. Yes. That we are, we are the same. And we are not the same. I don't know anything about it. It's that we share. I wish share. They are calling that guy. We share. Your state government has appealed to the federal government to speed up the completion of the Ibadan Dry Port, located at Erumo Village in Ibadan. The appeal was made by the executive governor of your state, Senator Biola Jibbi, who was represented by his deputy, Otsumba Moses Alaki Adiemo, while playing host to the official delegation of the Federal Ministry of Transport at the Executive Chamber, Governor's Office, Akodi Ibadan. Correspondent Anolua Kwa Morige completes the report from Ibado. Located on the 121 acres of land situated at Enromo village in Ibadan, the Enromo Dry Port project is one that the Oyo State Government is looking up to as a veritable source of worth in no record time. This point was reiterated by the Deputy Governor of Oyo State, Otumba Moses Salakiadi Emo while receiving in audience the official delegation of the Federal Ministry of Transport in Ibadan. He commented the slow pace at which the federal government is handling the project, adding that an initiative of such importance is timely as government at all levels is now trying to diversify their economy. It is high time Nigerians to look inward, to look at other ways of generating income. Not only the federal government, but even within the states of the federation. I think we are not going to play the lesson. If this kind of thing, this airport, dry airport is developed, you agree with me that it's going to generate a lot of revenue for the three types of government. That is the federal, the state, and the local government. The Deputy Director of Maritime in the Federal Ministry of Transport, Mr. Patrick O'Day, who led the delegation, said the team is principally in the state for an inspection of the project site as a follow-up to the meetings that the state government had with the ministry in Abuja. He promised a speedy action on the project. You know how government works, especially if you are transiting from one government to the other. And I think that is what has happened over the years. But I can assure you that it will be done speedily this time, at least doing the kind of leadership that we have now. The Executive Secretary, Bureau of Public-Private Partnership of the State Government, Mr. Yenka Fatuki spoke on the economic importance of the ICD project. It will be a part of equivalent jurisdiction with Mr. Papa. That tells you there will be a lot of employment generated. There will be ancillary services. Professor Jacob Adekola, the chairman of the Enromo Dry Port Host Communities Consultative Council, spoke to Newsman. Since 2008, when turning of the sword was, uh, was conducted, uh, the place there, over there, you know, uh, there seems to be no other development you know, since that particular time. And we feel it is high time that we try to do something. The delegates from Abuja later visited the site to inspect the facilities on it in Ibadan. Anulua Omoride, MITV News. With a new government at the center, Nigerians are anxiously expecting something different from what obtained in the past in terms of good governance. This was the reaction on the purported 9 billion Naira wardrobe allowance for the federal lawmakers. Correspondent Abazi Kondeji reports that the allowance is creating public outcry from Nigerians who decried the Jumbo Pay earmarked for dressing describing it as outrageous and insensitive to the economic plight of Nigerians. Human rights activists in Oshobo also joined their voices to condemn the move, describing it as business as usual at this critical moment that Nigerians are of high hopes that the nation's economic crunch will soon be a thing of the past. 
the art the federal government to concentrate on how to bring the nation out of its present economic woes in order to ensure that the masses enjoy good governance. Yes, I will stamp out corruption, but there is limit to what I can do because of age. I did been I become the president when I when I was the governor then at forty something. At, so I would have, I would have been agile to do this. Yes, we have to, we have to give it to him. Age, yes. at, at least, and we believe even with his age, there is still wisdom that he can use to propel Nigeria to action. We should all believe that Nigeria is is, is on emergency now, and we should, we should act as us. There are, there are many countries in the world when they were in crisis, they declare emergency. Up to the cloth they will wear, they will ration everything to make sure that their state works in order. Reacting to a recent statement credited to President Muhammad Buhari in the media that his old age will limit his performance, Comrade Wahid Lawa said the president is trying to explain to Nigerians not to expect miracles overnight. He added that the president was aware of the task ahead before taking up the responsibility. Their demand, and even right from the beginning, they are talking about such a large amount. That huge amount could pay a lot of worker salary. Is it the height of insensitivity? We feel by the level of pressure and the pressure of the commission, it is evil. It is unacceptable. It is definitely an act against the people because at the time. Thanks for still being there. And now to foreign news. A 21-year-old man suspected of killing nine people at a historic African-American church in Charleston, South Carolina, has been arrested. Police said Dylan Roof of Lexington, South Carolina, was detained during a traffic stop in Shelby, North Carolina. The gunman is reported to have sat in on a Bible study meeting for a full hour before opening fire on the group. Six women and three men, including the church pastor, were killed. A hate crimes investigation has been launched. Pope Francis has blamed human selfishness for global warming in his long-awaited and keep encyclical calling for action on climate change. In the letter, he urges the rich to change their lifestyles to avert the destruction of the ecosystem. Environmentalists hope the message will spur the nations ahead of the UN Climate Conference in Paris in December. But parts of the document leaked earlier this week have already been criticized by some US conservatives. It has been dismissed by two Republican presidential candidates. We'll take another short break and bring you sports news. To sports segment. Liberia FA chairman Musa Biliti has announced plans to stand for the presidency of FIFA, saying it's Africa's time to be the world football. The 48-year-old is the second person to declare his candidacy after former Brazil international Zico. Biliti, who has led the Liberian FA since 2010, becomes only the second African to make a bid to become FIFA president. Current Confederation of African Football President Issa Hayato lost to Sepp Blatter in the 2002 presidential elections. On 2nd June, 79-year-old Blatter announced he would step down as president amid allegations of corruption among FIFA officials. 